So uh, my name is Carrie Haggerty. I uh, live in Puyallup, Washington, and um, I uh, have been riding motorcycles for ooh, probably 20, well, let's see, how old am I? I hate to do math here. I'm going to begin to date myself, but well over 30 years, been riding different yeah. bikes. Um, I also happen to be a Jack Russell enthusiast, and so, uh, pardon the camera motion here, but uh, we have, oh, Tilly. It, well, okay, she got bored with the process. We have Hamish over here. I really enjoy having my dogs, and I wanted to be able to take them with me um, on all my adventures, including motorcycle adventures. And uh, so that's how we got introduced to Pillion Pooch. Um, but I've had Hamish now. Uh, he'll be three this spring, and Tilly will be two. Um, and uh, we you know, got them from uh, a kennel that uh, has hunting dogs. So I, I do hunt with them um, mm -hmm. and uh, they're quite adventurous. They also do uh, search and rescue, also play dog sports. So yeah, they're, they're pretty active little creatures. What motorcycle do you ride? Um, currently have a uh, Triumph Tiger 900 Rally Pro. And um, prior to that, I had a, a Tiger 800. Um, I like the Triumph motorcycles. So I upgraded to the Rally Pro because of the changes they made in the weight and the way it's configured um, makes it easier for me to ride. And basically, I took it on a test ride and went, okay. I I went on a test ride assuming I wouldn't want it and then got done with the test ride and went, yeah, I want that bike. So that's how I ended up upgrading. Uh, we Living here in the Pacific Northwest, uh, there's lots of fire roads. Um, we have a backcountry discovery route. We have a lot of, of off road ish riding you can do as well as a lot of really hardcore off right off road riding, not really into the hardcore stuff, but I do like getting out where, um, what we have, what we call, um, dispersed camping. So it, they are not a formal campgrounds. They're not established campsites. Um, so you kind of just kind of go out and then you can, um, pick a spot as long as you're you're away from the road and away from other people and you can you can camp or hike and do all these things so it's it's really nice and on a motorcycle it's a little easier to get to than on uh, walking um in a wet and winter season i also have my tacoma pickup truck set up um so that i can go out four-wheeling as well but nice. motorcycle is more fun is that mostly the type of riding you do with tilly and ha hamish um, we actually do a wide range. We have also taken them on just road trips um, to go. Uh, I've actually taken them to dog sports and to training events on the back of the bike. That's usually entertaining for people when I pull up and they're like, you have your dogs in there? <laughs> um, but we, I hate to leave them home. I, I just hate to leave them in a crate by themselves all day. Um, I know they're fine, but they don't get a choice. And so the more they can, the more they have fun and can go with me and be safe that's what i go for um if they can't go and it, they aren't if they don't want to go if they're not willing um i've had them i've taken them out in the garage and said let's go and they've looked at me and went nope not today <laughs> not today I'm like okay we'll put you back in the house we'll take the carrier off the bike and um and you can stay home and have a day off and i'm gonna go play and usually i get home and they're like but you left me <laughs> <laughs> and it's like you made the choice. So, um, but I always want it to be a positive experience. I never want it to be a have to experience. Um, you know, if I was in a hard situation and I had to make them ride because it was for their own safety, that would be a different situation completely. But when it's just for fun, um, I want them to do it willingly. And I have to say, I really, really like the pillion pooch for its, its structure, its design, its versatility. Um, you know, if there were, there, with all things, there are things that could be improved over time. And I think what I like is that, that you guys have real world experience with it. You know, it's been out there. It's been on adventures. What was it like teaching them to ride? Like I said, we do a lot of dog sports and I've done a lot of different types of training with them, search and rescue training and a lot of things. So yeah, you have to build up. The very first thing you have to do is build up good communication. You have to understand what they're telling you and you need to make sure they understand what you're asking. And then the next step is to just make it okay for them to choose. Um, 
I've seen people, I've, even in my life when I've had the previous dogs, try to do the force method, right? Of I'm just going to pick them up and put them in it and we're going to go do it and they'll have fun and then they'll be fine. And I've seen that go okay sometimes and I've seen that go horrible hmm. at times. And you end up with a dog that's terrified and runs away from you and doesn't want anything to do with the bike. So I I prefer the more gentle method and letting them choose. So we started out, um, I can't even remember the name of the product, but it was before I discovered Pillion Pooch. Um, there was another, another company and it's a plastic bubble and it's got a window in it and I can't remember the name of it, but, uh, it's really intended for scooters, not for motorcycles. And so that was the first one I got. And, um, all I had at the time was Hamish. And so the very first thing we did is we got it. We brought it in the house. We set it down and we'd throw treats in it. We'd have it wide open, just sitting on the floor, throwing treats in, getting him to go in, get the treats, come out. So we figured out that it's kind of a treat dispenser. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, now, before we did that, he was already, so he has what we call his sky box. So he has a little, uh, he's small enough to fly in cabin with us when we travel. And he's been flying since he's four months old. So we know that if we get out his carrier for going on the airplane, as soon as we get it out and unzip it, he's in it. And that's because of this throwing treats in, making it a positive, making it a game, making it fun. So we just took that technique and applied it to the POW. Well, he quickly outgrew the POW. And also it wasn't great for hot weather because it is solid plastic. That it, It's got vents, but it just would heat up. And so it wasn't comfortable. It didn't attach super solidly to the bike. Um, everything was plastic. I just, I wasn't comfortable with it. So mostly I would ride around the block with him on it. But we started out with him just getting in it, getting out of it, learning to get into it. We asked him to, um, and then at the same time, getting him used to the idea of the motorcycle. So we just let him be around the motorcycle. Then we start the motorcycle and got to the point where he wasn't reacting to the bike, didn't want to bite the tires, wasn't afraid of it. And then we slowly started bringing the two things together. So then we put the carrier on the bike, taught him that he could jump up on the seat. So uh, actually, I think we taught him that before we put the carrier on. But you get the point. We broke it down. The The whole point is, is you break this down into tiny bite bites. And some dogs can take really big bites, and they'll go from four feet on the ground to they're in the carrier. They get it. It's no big deal. And then other dogs, it can take a couple of days or weeks. or They may never get it because they don't want to. They're afraid of it. Um, but the key was we never pushed him to the point where he was afraid. So it got to the point where if we opened the garage door, he was in, he would jump up on the motorcycle seats and look at us like, Hey, put the carrier on. I'm ready to go. Um, or if the carrier was on the ground, he would jump in it. So once he outgrew the POW, then we went to, a um, a soft sided carrier. It's called, it's by Curricam. That one was nice because it was right on the pillion seat, right behind me, kept the weight nicely contained and at this point we only had Hamish so it wasn't a big deal and um, my riding partner would carry the other gear and I still had my side cases and uh, with the boxes and everything around it even though it was a soft side to carrier it was well protected by the luggage if I was to tip over or have anything happen I felt like there was protection and it's nice. It's got nice venting. Um, I can open up the panels. He can see out those kinds of things. So it, it worked, worked well for us, but then we got Tilly <laughs> and Tilly came into our lives. Um, she was a, she was a return from a family who couldn't keep her uh, to our kennel that we got Hamish from. And so uh, she came to stay with us for a week till we could get her back uh, to the kennel. And we decided that we loved her. So she stayed with us and that complicated our, our, our motorcycle riding quite a bit because one, they couldn't both ride in one curricane. Um, my riding partner wasn't hundred percent comfortable having the dog on the bike with her. And, and then of course we had to teach Tilly. Um, and we got, you know, we'd started working with Hamish from day one, from the day we had him building communication and a relationship. And so it was very easy with him. Tilly, we got her at about seven months of age. So she was kind of, in a fear phase she'd had she hadn't had a whole lot of life experience she hadn't been exposed to a lot of things um she came from a good family they loved her they just didn't quite know how to handle her as being a terrier 
so with her, we had to take a much slower approach. There was a lot more breaking things into much smaller pieces. And, um, you know, she'd never seen a motorcycle. She had no idea what it was. But we quickly figured out that she watched what Hamish did and, and wanted to do it too. So that really helped her. And so she came along pretty quickly. And But then came the challenge of how do we carry two terriers? And they're not huge. They're not big dogs. Um, but definitely couldn't put one, put them both in one curriculum just wasn't going to work so started searching and started searching and uh happened to stumble on pillion pooch videos on youtube and i was like what is this thing this looks cool so started researching and finally found you guys and then started trying to debate you know do well how big are the dogs to how big is the box etc and i'm i'm pretty sure i remember having some email exchanges back and forth to say, you know, here's kind of, here's how big my dogs are. How big is the thing? How much is it weigh? Ordered it. And, uh, sadly, I think it was right at the beginning of the pandemic. So it just complicated everything, but, uh, got that. And then, uh, kept looking at that, how you guys were attaching it and everything. And I was like, you know, I want to do the, uh, the back road equipment, uh, mounting bracket and the pox. Uh, and I was like, you know, that seems like the cleanest, install for being able to put it on remove it because dogs don't always go with me and so to be able to remove it and then put luggage or do other things it it gave me a lot of flexibility so um and steve at back road equipment was amazing as well because the he didn't have a he didn't have one made for a 900 yet it was the bike was too new and so and back and forth with him i actually removed the rear tail assembly of my bike and shipped it to him and he custom, or well, he used it to make the pattern. So now he can offer a Tiger 900 um, bracket, specific bracket for the bike. So it worked out. And he gave me a very nice discount. I do have to say he was he was super nice. And, um, and it's a great product. So very, even when I don't have the pillion pooch with me, I love the back road equipment plate because I, it basically becomes a, a table on the back of my bike. But what I really like is with the pucks attached to the pillion pooch, when I mount that pillion pooch, it's not moving. Mm. I don't have any concerns whatsoever um, that it's going anywhere. But I really like when we get to camp, I take that pillion pooch off. I set it on the ground. The dogs have their own tent. And they've become great fans of they can't wait for it to come down and sit next to the fire. Because with the front open, but the, but the cover on, it, it lets the heat in. So it gets nice and warm in there. And they, they'll go in there and hang out. The dogs uh, really appreciate being able to get up off the ground, get out of the weather. And um, yeah, so that's been a really, that's been an unexpected bonus of the pillion pooch. It just gives them their space. I mean, they, and one thing I've learned in traveling with the dogs is the more that you have something consistent for them, mm. the happier they are. And so we can change places every night, but they know that that, that, that pillion pooch is is their space yeah and it's their safe space and that it, wherever they as long as they're with that we're not going to leave them i think is kind of their belief it's like oh we still got the pillion pooch we're good they're not leaving us behind just just on um accessories do you have any for uh tilly and hamish when they're riding or is there you know anything you carry specifically for them yeah we do they have their own little kit i have a a pair of tour tech bags uh my hard bags on the side of the motorcycle or tour tech, and then they have attachment points. And so they each have a roll top. It's a small roll top, uh, waterproof bag. And, um, that contains their, each of their stuff so that we know that if Tilly needs something, I go to this bag and if Hamish needs something, I go to this bag. So they have, uh, harnesses. I believe the ones we're using right now are the Kurgo, uh, our Kurgo uh, body harnesses that are generally intended for automotive use, but I like the way they distribute the weight and their attachment points. So we use the Kurgo harnesses when they're in the carrier. And we carry jackets for them because if it's cold, uh, if it's hot out, we don't worry too much about it. But in the cold mm-hmm. weather, we carry carry uh, fleece jackets for them. Then they have water bowls and, and food bowls, of course, their food, snacks, leads. And then um, we have equipment to create tie outs. So sometimes we're in places where dogs are not allowed to be off leash. Um, yeah. So we want to be able to keep them contained to where we're at. And so we have these long, um, they're kind of, you know, if you've seen the hammock kits you can get for hanging hammocks, it's like that only it's one big long line for tying out dogs and you can run it between two trees or between two posts or from a high to a low. There's a lot of different configurations 
We carry one each of those for the dogs uh, with a leash specifically that stays attached to that. And it creates a run for them so that they have they can move around, but they're contained. We carry uh, rubber. They look like balloons, um, <laughs> but they're foot covers. And uh, mainly because sometimes we can get in areas where there's stuff that's a foot da- uh, danger. Or if they were to get a foot injury, we'd want to keep their feet protected. So um, we carry a package of those. I Again, I don't know. It's great. I don't know the names of these things. Um, it's been so long since I purchased them. But uh, if you just go out and look, you can find them. They're great. Uh, you can get them in a wide range of sizes. They keep the foot dry. They keep it protected. If they're an injury, you can wrap it. Um, so I like those in a first aid kit. But I carry uh, the ability to wash out their eyes. And then uh, they have eye protection. So we have some rec specs for them. Um, we don't use it too much, which just basically if we're in an environment where we feel like there might be debris flying around or dust, we'll use them. Um, we have learned you have to be careful with goggles on dogs. Um, the pressure that they can cause can actually cause eye injury. I did not know that until I took a, a, a pet first aid class or working dog first aid class with search and rescue. And they were like, you know, you can use goggles. You can use doggles, those kinds of things are, that they are actually good to use. You just don't want to just leave them on them all the time um, because they there is an element of the eyes needing to breathe and all these other things. So I was like, good. Interesting to know. Uh, Rex Specs recently came out with their own hearing protection product that is really cool because it's a sleeve that goes over the head and it keeps the ear protectors right over their ears. It's a little easier than the old just mm. bubble ear protectors with the harness. Yeah. Um, so we're testing those out right now. Um, and again, it's if I'm going to be driving, riding at real high speeds and we're going to have excessive air noise, um, I do con- I do get concerned about that a little bit. So we have that available. And this is stuff that they also have for search and rescue work. So uh, might as well use it, right? We've got They've got their own blankets and, and dog beds for the tents and when we're camping and that kind of stuff. So they have some of their own camping gear. We try to make sure it's a safe activity for them, avoiding going at super high speeds for long periods of time, making sure I'm in environments that, that I know I can control the bike so I'm not dropping them on the ground. You know, It happens, but uh, you want it to be as controlled as you can, right? Yeah. The idea is for it to be a some fun fun activity, not a dangerous one, yeah. um, but life's dangerous. So that's kind of the way it is, you know? That's a really good list. And there's a lot of really good information you've provided, Kerry. Um, so thank you for that. Is there one thing you might tell somebody who's interested in riding with their dog? One, take an honest assessment as to why you want your dog to ride with you. Um, is it for them or is it for you? Because if it's for you, you better hope the dog wants to come along or you're, you're going to have a challenge. Um, they're they're going to fight you. And on two wheels, a dog moving around behind you is challenging let's put it that way um depending how good of a rider you are it can be dangerous but don't be afraid to try um you know a lot of people are like oh i wouldn't want to put my dog in danger i don't want um i'm I'm afraid my dog just can't do it he's he's too stupid or he's too bullheaded or blah 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 blah. dogs are very resilient creatures for thousands and thousands of years they've been adapting to us and we've been adapting to them. And ultimately, the biggest thing is they want to be with us. Um, if, if most dogs, if given the option of coming with you or staying behind, they want to come with you. Rare exceptions. Hamish is special. He sometimes is like, no, nah, I'd rather nap. I'm good today. But if you break it down and, and don't get discouraged by setbacks. You know, if, if today the dog happily jumps in when it's on the ground and then tomorrow you put it up a little higher, or you put it on the bike and they're terrified of it. Take a step back and instead of putting it on the ground again, maybe put it up on a little stool that's really stable. And dog forums out there, there's tons of, of great places you can go if you're having problems trying to figure out how to break a, a, a training task down. Um, there's tons of places out there where you can go and ask your question. And you're going to get people who are going to be Oh, you, you're stupid for taking your dog on a bike on your motorcycle. It's so dangerous. You shouldn't be riding a motorcycle. It's so dangerous. And you know, the best way to deal with those folks is to smile and nod, tell them you appreciate their feedback. You're going to make your choices. Don't get in an argument with them. 
you know, you're the only one that, that bears responsibility at the end of the day. And um, I've had people who are like, well, aren't you just afraid that you're going to have an accident and you're going to, your dogs will get hurt or killed? And I'm like, yes. I have a healthy fear every time I crawl on my motorcycle. I have a healthy fear for myself every time I crawl on a motorcycle. Mm. Um, that's probably what keeps me alive. Um, and it's, and yeah, there are people who won't take that risk and that's okay. They don't have to, it's, it's their choice. Um, but don't let, don't let people tell you that you can't or you shouldn't or, um, do it smart, do it safe. Let the dog have some choice, but, the end of the day they're going to want to do whatever you would whatever you're doing if you have a good relationship with your dog so i know that travel has been a bit restricted uh last year and it's looking like this year isn't improving a huge amount anywhere you you really want to go with tilly and hamish the plan for the coming year um we're going to take an off-road course in the spring as long as they hold it and and kind of i want to build my off-road skills I'm, i'm comfortable by myself but when you start putting, well, let's see, Hamish is about 20 pounds, Tilly's about 15 pounds, there's 35, the plain pooch is about 20 pounds. <laughs> so, you know, y- y- you have a small child on the back of your bike that's wiggling around sometimes. I need to build some skills, off-road skills. So the, that's the first course is to take some classes. But then um, because we have all these great kind of dispersed areas where there aren't tons of people, even with the pandemic, it's it's possible to get out and and go on rides. So definitely want to take them on some more camping trips this uh, this summer. Um, I think the one other thing I would tell people is is watch where you're riding with them in the plane pooch on the back. Um, I've done very very short stints of what I would say is high speed in the pillion, and that's the fifty five to sixty range of of speed um not really highway speeds i avoid highway but um kind of the higher access higher speed roads if you do it for any length of time there's a good deal of fatigue that kind of comes to the dogs because there's a lot of wind noise and it there's even for you there's a lot of as a rider there's a lot of buffeting if if it's windy at all because it's, it's a pretty big wind catch on the back um i was surprised at how good it does do um, going forward. But, um, if we're, if they're going with us on a trip, they're kind of at the heart of the trip. So regular, regular stops where they get to get down and run around and, and be dogs for a minute and relax. Um, you know, we have, we always build that into our, into our trips so that, you know, we're thinking about, oh, well, okay, I'm getting a little hot. So I bet the dogs are getting a little hot or I'm thirsty. So I bet the dogs are thirsty. Um, you can't just pound out the miles and then suddenly look around and go, oh, I have a dog in the back. Is the dog okay? Um, they'll quickly decide they don't want to go with you if that's if that's their world. Don't be afraid to go out and find other. Oh, here's Hamish. He's like, hi. <laughs> he's, he's famous for popping in frame. But don't be afraid to find other people to help solve problems. Just just because you come up against a bump um, doesn't mean it won't work or you can't do it. And um, and yeah, it's, it's it's a lot of fun. It's it's great fun to be able to travel with your dogs. Um, every time I open the garage door, it doesn't matter what I'm doing, they'll run in. And if the pillion pooch is anywhere within their leaping range, and they're Jack Russells, so that's a pretty big that's a pretty big range, they jump in it. And they're like, hey, where are we going? What are we doing? Uh, if you walked out in my garage right now and looked at the seat of my motorcycle, there are dog prints all over it. <laughs> Be, and, and, you know, the door they run in, they jump up and they're like, where's my carrier? I want to go. Let's go. Um, so it, it's quite possible. And then you're going to get attention everywhere you go. Um, I, it, to end, I'll, I'll tell you this story. So back before we had Tilly and we, we didn't have the pillion pooch yet, but we were using the Curacan. And we went on a, a long weekend motorcycle trip. Uh, we have a beautiful route out around the Cascade Mountains and it, over to some mountain lakes. And it's just a gorgeous ride. Beautiful little towns. All This, of course, was all pre-pandemic. So people were still talking to each other. But um, we pulled into this little town and uh, we'd parked the bikes and it was warm. So we were peeling off gear and um, all three of us happened to be on uh, Triumphs. 
and um we got hamish down and we're letting him walk around and meet people and from across the parking lot we hear and i'm not going to try a british accent at all because i will butcher it and people will hate me so but in this beautiful british english lilt we hear blimey is that a triumph in america of them with a jack russell and so this couple comes over and um, start talking to us. And they're from, they, they were visiting the States from, from England and uh, doing the tourist thing. And just, they, they, it was, it was, it was really fun. We had this long conversation and he had try he had older Triumph my motorcycles back home and um, was a Jack Russell fan and, you know, all of these things. And so, but it's, it's fun. The people you meet, the looks you get, I pull up to a stop sign and they're like, what's the big, you know, they think I'm a pizza delivery person or something. And then the dog sticks their head out and they just about lose it because they're like, that's just the best thing ever. It engages people around a wide range of conversations around, um, around dogs and what they can and can't do and around motorcycles and around safety and, um, and just around having fun and generally, you know, seeing people as good people. Um, in this world, now we're to the point where we really, really need, we need a lot more smiles and a lot more positivity in the world. What is the one thing you love most about Tilly and Hamish? Their adventurous spirit. They can go from, I'm going to show you here. They can go from this. Okay, there's Hamish. I'll move my foot. Oop. Camera, at work. there we go. They can go from that sound asleep to full bore ready to go in snap of a finger. So um, they make me a better person. That's what I love best about them.